Oh, is that my phone? Don't forget. Thank you. My grandbaby gave me my phone, y'all. You want to say hi real quick? Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, uh, listen, y'all. I don't know how long, you know. Actually, I don't know if anybody <coughs> left from this administration can even save their jobs anymore. Um, Mitch McConnell might be safe, but the rest of them, you can bet your bottom dollar. Um, Lindsey Graham right now was in the race of his life. Um, I think all of them should be gone. And I think the tortoise is the main one. He's definitely been up in there too long. It definitely needs to go. Uh, Mitch McConnell, Moscow Mitch, is a problem. Um, so he said he hasn't been in the White House. But let me let me read this article to you. It's from the Los Angeles Times. And it says, as Trump's fortunes sink, Republicans start to distance themselves in the bid to save the Senate. Okay. As President Trump skids deeper into political peril, anxious Republicans have started to try to distance themselves from his fate, appealing to voters to elect them as a check on a Joe Biden administration. As they make closing arguments in a desperate bid to keep control of the state, of the Senate, what are you doing? Of the Senate, even Trump loyalists are chaffing when asked how deep their support for the president runs. Senate campaigns, which long focused on electing candidates, um, would be loyal, who would be loyal to Trump, now pitch a darker message <laughs> to their constituents. Uh, one assumes that uh, Trump won't be there. Okay, and and that is just what it is. They are assuming that Trump will not be there. You got this too loud. Okay, do you understand? Okay. Um, Senate campaigns, which long focused on electing candidates who would be loyal to Trump, now pitch a darker message to Republican voters, one that assumes that Trump won't be there. If we lose the Senate, there will be no firewall to stop the Democrats from implementing their Armageddon plan to pack the courts with activist, activist judges and to add four new Democrats to the Senate by giving statehood to D.C. and Puerto Rico, said a fundraising appeal at the Senate Conservative Fund. We can't allow this to happen. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, one of the Trump's most loyal lieutenants, abruptly jumped off the Trump train this week to stake out a politically and medically safer position on the coronavirus crisis, that is Trump's biggest political liability. McConnell said at a news conference Thursday in Kentucky that he had not been in the White House for more than a month because he did not think that its safety standards were stringent enough. My impression was that their approach to how to handle this is different than from mine, and I, and what I suggested that we do in the Senate, which is wear a mask and to practice social distancing, said McConnell, who is 78, um, and in an expensive fight also for re-election this year. Uh, veteran Texas Republican John Cronin, Corrin, said in his pitch for an endorsement from the White House Chronicles, he scolded Trump for downplaying the dangers of the coronavirus. And in his papers, in which he endorsed Corrin in the past, uh, ultimately opted to support Democrat M.J. Hager. That's the Houston Chronicle. I think Trump might 
calls us a tidal wave, said one top Republican strategist and Trump supporter who asked not to be named in discussing internal party matters. He is ankle weights in a pool on Senate candidates. I am going to have to, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> he said that something. He said, um, oh my goodness. Texas uh, Republican Senator, I, I said that already, John Cornyn, in his pitch for an endorsement from the Houston Chronicle, scolded Trump for downplaying the dangers of the virus. The paper, which had endorsed Corn in the past, ultimately opted to support the Democrat MJ Hager. Um, and I could get it. He said he said they think that he caused the tidal wave. The move away from Trump resembles the strategy Republicans followed in 2016 when many party leaders assumed he would lose. And in 1996, when the party's nominee, Bob Doyle of Kansas, badly trailed Bill Clinton. Wow. Um, in both cases, the approach was to avoid directly criticizing the nominee for fear of alienating his loyalists while appealing to voters to keep a Republican Congress to deny Democrats a blank check. You need to make the argument if you elect Biden, he has no guardrails with a Democratic controlled Congress, said former GOP. Representative Tom Davis, who served as chair of the House Republican campaign from 98 to 2002. They will start doing goofy things like unpacking the Supreme Court. Davis said he urged GOP leaders in a memo sent earlier this year to pursue that strategy to tap into support from anti-Trump Republicans. In the fall of 2016, a blitz of GOP ads and congressional races warned that Hillary Clinton was headed to the White House and that the country's best hope of containing her radical agenda was to make uh, sure that to send, to send this a Republican lawmaker to Washington. Y'all got it too, huh? Among the most ardent supporters of the strategy was South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. A Trump skeptic at the time, who has since converted blindly, he's the head of the of the cult, him and um, Moscow Mitch, uh, to a Trump loyalist. Now Graham is up for re-election, locked in a cutthroat race that could end his 18-year Senate career, and he is back to warning of a Democratic apocalypse. Yeah, right. Let me tell you the nightmare scenario for our state, he said in a debate with his Democratic opponent, Jamie Harrison. If they keep the House, take over the Senate, and Biden as a president, God help us all. The most liberal agenda in the history of American politics is coming out of the House to the Senate. If people in the great state of South Carolina... um will look at how their well their state is faring, just like the folks in Kentucky. They will get these lifetime bums out of there. Okay, you the Cook Political Report, a nonpartisan election handicapper, recently downgraded Graham's chances of re-election and said in his declining fortunes underscore just how fast the GOP majority is slipping away. If they have to defend turf like this, and also how much Trump's numbers have fallen all the way across the board. I think that might be the guys here ready to fix the fence. Anyway, in 2016, the warning that a GOP Congress would be needed to hold a president, Clinton, in check um, helped Senate Republicans run two points ahead of Trump, according to Patrick Ruffini, 
a GOP strategist. That was just enough for the GOP to eck out wins in several key states. Candidates seem and they need to be thinking of how to make the same argument in the next 26 days. Because uh, Trump is a uh, He's dangling by the seat of his pants. And like anybody knows, a narcissist, the worst thing you can do is allow them to suffer a narcissistic injury. Those of y'all who out there and call yourself having channels that deal with narcissism and stuff, y'all should talk about Donald Trump. Otherwise, y'all ain't doing us no good. Nobody, not the country. I mean, because they need to be preparing for what this narcissist can do. He's got the codes, y'all. When narcissists experience an injury, such as a defeat, all of y'all should be talking about that on y'all platform, narcissistic injury, so people can pair, can prepare for the mayhem that's about to go down. That shit in Michigan was just the tip of the iceberg. And unless y'all gonna get real and talk about how sick this man really is, forget about the partisan aspect. Of it. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Both of y'all can jump in the lake for all I care. I'm talking about the bipartisan uh, 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 subject of it all. Y'all need to talk about what a narcissist does when he's injured. The way if Donald Trump should be in the next 25, 26 days. That should be on the forerunner on all of y'all channels. Otherwise, y'all ain't worth two dead flies as far as I'm concerned. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Because I probably don't went too far.